you, you. Join us on the deck here in Freaky Town, USA. Just south of downtown. We had a good breakfast over at the Daily News Cafe. Once again, it's kind of our Sunday thing. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice place. Been there a few times. They treat us like king and a queen. I or a queen you. and a king, pardon me. More appropriate to address my significant other rather than myself first. <laughs> yeah, shame on you. The better yeah. of the two. Shame, shame, shame. I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> Shower me with the comments, please. What were we? Uh, what were we talking about at at dinner, or at uh, breakfast? Sorry, why did I just say dinner? Breakfast earlier mm. that was cracking you up so much. No, it wasn't anything that you said. It was more. It was the video uh -huh. of you. That looked like the cow. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. He's oh, doing the, yeah. this weirdo tongue movement yeah. out of his face. And I wish that I could just show people as we're doing this podcast what How that awesome looks like. How awesome my skills yeah. are. And there, it's akin to a cow that was doing a very similar movement with she just mouth. said that i was <laughs> she just said that i was akin to a cow, cow. yeah <laughs> very nice very very similar and i was like oh wow babe and this was a, this was obviously a well <laughs> hung production bull uh -huh. it right. was a heifer yeah. Yeah, it was actually a female. It was just heifer, a female ginger But I would like to believe heifer. it was a longhorn bull. No, no, you know, it was weird. With his it was making me uncomfortable. Down to his knees. <laughs> what? what? It was female. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'd like to imagine if you. I'm akin to a a cow of sort. A heifer. I would like to believe that it's not a heifer, which is a female cow that produces mm -hmm. other cows and milk. Right. Yes. I, no, I'm not. I'm not. The king. I'm of not cows. associating myself with that. Is this our first <laughs> fight since this morning? How <laughs> did we fight this morning? No. Dave, good morning. Good morning, Logan. I know. It's supposed to be called Hippie Grandpa, and it's us over here bickering. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so officially, uh -oh, I'm doing welcome my Hippie to Grandpa <laughs> thing. I'm just sitting there. Episode 22, also known as. The first episode premiering, dun dun dun, <laughs> Hippie Grandpa, also known as Dreamwave Studios. Good morning, Dave. <laughs> it was. Thank you. <laughs> Until you is it the came. grandpa part of the label or the hippie part of the label, or is it just being put in any box whatsoever that bothers you the most about this? Uh, it's the first time I've had a label like that. Oh, you know, so grandpa. it's a little different. Yeah. It's cool. There should definitely be a made a cartoon character of <laughs> like, you. Yeah. <laughs> like I told him yesterday, I can't really argue the point. I do kind of live like a hippie, I guess, some people would say, and I am a grandpa, mm -hmm. so that's that's how he sold me on it. I was yeah. like, You can't say that. And he was so, like, No, but he's a hippie <laughs> but, and he's a grandpa. <laughs> Both facts. I was like, Oh, he okay. can't be offended. <laughs> I can't argue with that. Here's the thing Let's though. See. Here's the thing. The first thing that came up to the first time I came up with the term hippie grandpa <laughs> and this brilliant idea about how to market a reality TV show about yeah. Dave, Denise. <laughs> he told me about this. <laughs> so, Denise, we were at my other house and we were like preparing it for showings for the weekend. And so we we're painting. We had some light sockets to fix and all this. I was like, hey, Dave, that outdoor light socket needs this new plate on it, but it's hanging out. And I, he's like, all right, I got it. <laughs> right he goes out there and he's prying on this thing he's prying on this thing his muscles were flexing like his tricep was out and stuff and he was forcing on this thing and he's like whack whack he was beating on it with the back side of it he was definitely and then he comes over all casual and stuff as i'm watching dave be all man and shit like i've never seen before he comes up <laughs> he comes over and he taps on the window nice and soft and he's like hey check out my job man i'm like <laughs> Damn, hippie grandpa's got <laughs> skills. <laughs> he's got some he's got some handyman skills. Fixed it. Yeah. He was very adamant about telling me how bulging your tricep was during this moment of <laughs> hitting. Wow. I was like, wow, babe, you could stop. It was yeah. I was getting a little jealous in that Dave, moment. You never know what 
kind of impression you make on people, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you, man. That's cute, Dave. <laughs> Super cute, man. <laughs> it's so true, though. It's, it's so, so true. Oh, so anyway. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to follow Dave around with a camera while he's fixing Just the kitchen Just doing scene. rando things. <laughs> wow. We'll see if we I'm So you're turning me into a reality yeah, show. Yeah, exactly. That's what he was talking about this morning. Just, well, that's. I came up with the idea as we were... Yeah. As we were talking about it, actually, you just got to text me anytime you do something out of the ordinary and me and Peyton will show up with cameras and microphones. <laughs> Most well, mornings be, when I wake up. I know. I would yeah. be like, pretty much everything's kind of out of the ordinary. <laughs> to some people. Yeah. Just anything. Eight hour know. long meditation sessions. That's where I'm at. That's studio. exactly what I'm thinking of. <laughs> Maybe well, no cameras for that. Yeah. Well, man. <laughs> Dang. It's nice to uh, come and hang in the backyard with you, me bra. It's my favorite spot. Yeah, thank you for coming. Isn't it nice back here today? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Second day of spring. Is so is that it, what that I is? I thought. Yeah. I had a debate with Mike across the street if yesterday was the last day of winter or the first day of spring. <laughs> It's the first day of spring. Yesterday, Yesterday was the first day of spring. So today yeah. is day two then. March 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Mike, if you tune into this one, you were <laughs> wrong, dude. <laughs> He's probably going off some kind of special clock or... Yeah. He gets pretty technical with some of that stuff. Does he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's an amazingly intelligent person. Yeah, I've he had is. some cool conversations with him about stuff totally agree yeah he was telling me two stories about how he was lugging around his um fishing canoes and mm -hmm. fishing boats on top of his old wagoneers yeah um way back in the day through the mountains and the creeks and the ravines and stuff and yeah he said he lost the whole front end on one of them and <laughs> told me another tragic story about what happened in his other jeep wagon while he had a a boat on top of it that he would go on his regular really adventures of fishing in the wild uh-huh man yeah he's quite the outdoorsman sailor skier yeah swimmer i'd really Very like athletic. to get him on a podcast one day to be honest yeah i think he would be an interesting person to chat with for a bit he's had quite a life i'm sure i've yeah. heard just little bits and pieces i'll talk to him about it cool yeah. Yeah. Same. He stops at the front yard and chats with me and Reese occasionally during mm -hmm. the summers. Yeah. He's making his rounds. Yeah. He always tells me to say hi to you guys. He's a he's sweet a guy. Yeah. yeah. I really like him a lot. Yeah. yeah. Very cool guy. I agree. He's probably seen some, seen some pretty amazing things as we all have, I guess. Yeah. Man. Yeah. The breeze and the birds. It's pretty chill back here. I love it back here, especially on days like in the mornings when we come over here and drink some coffee. <laughs> it's peaceful. It's really peaceful. Thanks. Yeah, no, I enjoy that. I think uh, it's funny because whenever I go into our house, unless I'm in the bed, yeah. I just feel like I'm a mover and a shaker at the house, whether it be if I'm sitting down working or actually like moving around yeah but when you come here it's like it's a sit down type of space where you're like all right i'm gonna chill for a second yeah <laughs> so i always I, i've got that from I, other you people got that too. Vibe. Yeah, yeah for sure you. i'm glad that people can come over and enjoy that oh that for sure vibe yeah. and that feeling mm -hmm. there's a few other people that come over here just for that reason None it's they'll just come to over take can a, i come over and just relax yeah just relax. relax yeah i'm like yeah sure it's a relaxing space cool. For yeah. sure. I get a lot of enjoyment hearing that. Yeah. That's awesome. It's nice to be able to share those kind of things. Oh, yeah. Well, it's nice to have to exude that kind of energy. Like, honestly, it's like right when you open that back door, that noise <laughs> yeah. of the wooden door, automatically yeah. I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm chilling out. Yeah. I'm listening on the floor. Listen to Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're talking about make, inside the studio. I'm inside the studio. Yeah. Outside the studio is pretty nice, especially watching the hummingbirds get after it. Yeah. It's Henry is his name. Herman. 
Herman. Herman the yeah. hummingbird. Herman the hummingbird. Yeah. He's rad. And he's a little territorial thing. Yeah. But he hasn't been around much this morning, but it's about that time. Yeah. He starts start. protecting his feeder. Mm-hmm. Feeder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> what are you guys laughing about? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You're funny. It was like a regular conversation that you and I have. About Herman the Hummingbird? Just about anything. Oh, feeding? Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? No. When he said it like that, it sounded like a zombie. Like feeding. Feeding zombies what? What? I don't know. I don't know. Lately, I've been talking about zombies. Did you know that the CDC has a plan for a zombie apocalypse? I did. I looked it up. I was like, there is no way that's a real thing. Oh, yeah. Really? The CDC. That doesn't really surprise me. Of course you You have. Well, not only the (laughs) CDC. Are you kidding? Does it surprise you? Not really. I mean, I understand it. Would if there is some sort of food or virus that makes you just feel like you want to be a cannibal? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it could happen if we could think it. It could it be could right. It could definitely happen. Real? Have you right. seen what happens whenever you get rabies? When a person gets rabies, they feed on their young, babe. Look at Peyton. He just looked over at me like this. <laughs> <laughs> what? He was like, "What in the is Logan talking about?" Yeah, did you? I mean, you mean other animals? No, animals that no, get, humans. What? He, you were so full of poop. Have you had your rabies shot? Yes or no? As a child? I don't know. Probably. It's not what you do when you get rabies. Have you had rabies? No, then but I have read know? about That's it. That's not what happens when you get rabies. They just start getting. You just heat up and you start foaming at the mouth and start going crazy. It doesn't mean you eat your young. Maybe in the movies. Maybe in the movies. Fine. <laughs> it's a nice story. Though. Yeah, Logan just wants to eat his young. I have no young, and I don't want to, nor does that sound appetizing. <laughs> for the record. Sometimes you look at my cat like that. Look at your cat like, what? wait, what? <laughs> like you want to eat him. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man. <laughs> What's new with you, Dave? Oh, oh me? Yeah. <laughs> What's new? Paintings. Yeah, I've been painting a little bit. It's been a little like a struggle right now. The what? Creative flow wasn't mm-hmm. working. But I got one in there you haven't seen. Yeah? Yeah. It's the one you guys were looking at last week. Well, which one? The um, the blue and red one. The one that looks the, like a uterus. Yeah. Or, well, no, <laughs> I don't know what you thought. It, you thought it looked like a couple of. I don't know. <laughs> no, it doesn't look anything like anything you thought it might have been. Oh, okay. Because there was one. Please pardon my girlfriend. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm, I'm trying to dance around it. <laughs> I'm trying to dance around gently. You Please know? pardon my girlfriend. Yeah. But anyway, there is a new painting. I'll get and there later for apologizing that? for my girlfriend for her. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's just talking for me. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Anywho. I did go surf. You did this week. morning? No, no. Oh, shit fire. Last week, I got back in the water. I think I told you. Yeah, we talked about Just a about, little bit. Yeah, and, we talked about that. You know, I managed to write, I wrote a couple. Yeah. And I'm still a baby. surprised myself. Actually, I popped right up first wave. I tried. Nice. And then um, just took it easy. I didn't want to, my shoulder's pretty messed up yeah. for paddling. So, mm-hmm. so Summertime I had time. Is, is close by. I know, I can't wait. A lot of water my time God, in our future. I can't wait. Yeah, it's a little rocky. The base of the shoreline right now has All been... Oh, yeah, it's you all know, rocks. Converted from beach to cobble. Yep. And I it's know. kind of gnarly on the bottoms of the, the feet. At least my feet aren't ten. They're a little tender now because I've been, uh, been out. with shoes on during the winter. Yeah. I don't remember the winters being quite so cold and, and wet around here as this one. 
This was a cold mm. winter for me. I it's, mean, but I it's hard for me to gauge because usually I'm traveling. Because it's colder in Oceanside than it is in Carlsbad, babe? No. I'm usually <laughs> traveling, at, traveling at this time for tattoos, but no traveling duty last year, so pandemic. So yeah. it's like one of those things where I got to spend the whole winter here yeah. in California, which was like, I feel like I've been chasing summers the last like three years, yeah, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> Wow. Well, it's because I, I'll tattoo somewhere warm every time yeah. during the winter. So when I'm home, it was only like a few weeks at a time. And I'd barely catch like the cold, like the real frigidness. Even 46 degrees was like nice because I wasn't inside an airport or something. Right. Yeah. But now that I'm in it and haven't been anywhere, it's almost like I'm used to it now, though. When it first started getting 46 I was such a baby during my runs. I was like, my hands are cold and everything's cold. And now I'm like running with just a sports bra on at 46 degrees at this point. Totally. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, the winters here are quite mild. They are, but I'm a baby. Yeah. I'm a California girl through But I through. think the, the reason why is here this close to the beach, this is my first long winter. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah because I was traveling as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I had been traveling. Um, and you traveled the, the colder places. Yeah, yeah, to New York and Colorado. So coming home was probably like warm for you. And so coming here during the winter, I was inland also mm -hmm. four miles mm -hmm. at my last house before here. Yeah. Or I was living in the van. Right. And living in that van, whenever wintertime would come around, I just remember it being coastal, Mexico, here warm surfing bigger waves i don't even remember it like hot or cold yeah no i, I all. totally agree it's the first time i actually so much i think yeah i feel you on that huh yeah it's been cold nights yeah this winter 30s yeah more more colder 30 degree nights than <laughs> i remember yeah i just you like know? that we're talking about the weather <laughs> and, uh, well it's spring man that's why because yeah. it's so nice out now. the rebirth yeah. Spring, the rebirth. Man, bring it back, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Beautiful day. Well, it's funny because we're Californians and we're talking about the weather that rarely changes much. Hey. You know? Yeah, we're talking about a few like, degrees here and there. I don't People know are still shoveling way. out of snow. You know, I don't know a better way to describe a SoCal vibe then. <laughs> yeah, 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 really. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, yeah. Shameless, shameless plug. What? Yeah. <laughs> I did want to talk to you guys about some stuff that was going around, mulling around in my mind lately about the value of time. When looking at oneself, being more self-aware, trying to be more self-aware, trying to improve, trying to grow, trying to enjoy more often, more time, more minutes in your life than not, right? That's, a, I think, an ambition for everyone is to, how much fun can I have as often as I can? Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit fire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where we want. That's where we want to be. Shit, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I feel like that's, I'm, I'm one it. of those lucky few that I'm, every day, I'm, living it. I'm pretty much happy in the moment. Get me wrong, I'm always somewhere in my mind and thinking ahead or, you know, overanalyzing things a bit, but I can bring it back. And that's really, it's really, really nice. When, even when I tell myself, oh man, it's already three. Like it's a habit just to be like, oh man, it's, it's only three. Like I'll change it really quick yeah. just to change the mindset. Just it's a habit of mine now these days because I really do get to choose what I do with my time every, pretty much every single moment yeah. of every single day. Blessed. Fucking Blessed. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that's King cool. blessed. You've worked hard to get to that point too, though. For yeah. sure. For sure. And I still happen. work pretty, pretty goddamn hard. I'm pretty yeah. proud of myself and my determination and drive, but man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's nice yeah. to have grown up here and know what paradise feels like as a home. And then to travel all over the world and be like, I still love home. I yeah. still the best. This, spot. this is my yeah. spot. That's yeah. cool. It's paradise. It's awesome. Yeah, I guess what I'm hearing you say anyway is that the place we are where you're spending your time mm -hmm. 
physically in space and time yeah. is adding the most value to you here so far, at least at this point. Oh, and yeah. therefore you feel like it's, it's kind of like at its best. It feels that way now anyway, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I'll admit it was, it, it, once you get out of place of paradise and you like go and you see other things and you experience other worlds and other times of your life, it's just like, it's pretty incredible to come back here and really love it. I'm, I'm a go, go kind of person. I'm always on the go. I'm always thinking of my next step. What's, what's happening. I'm pretty much always moving, shaking and moving. And in my 20s, I think I moved every single year to a new house. Every mm. single year I had a new rental spot. I mean, I was getting bigger as I was getting more successful. I was getting into bigger spaces. But at the same time, I just wanted to live in different cities as well. And so I was always wanting to spend my time somewhere else. I was always escaping. And now I'm finding that like here in Oceanside and here where I'm home and having an experience with a pandemic of having to stay home, it's almost like grounded me to a point where... I'm okay here in this space, you know, and spending my time here, but it's also forced me to kind of spend time with me. Cause I think that as we're always shaking and moving, we're not really like being <clears throat> present in the moment with ourselves where we're, we have our own thoughts this morning. You were talking about what if you couldn't exercise, how do you, you know, get out of your head mm -hmm. when the chattering doesn't seem to stop. And usually it like my escape is the run or my escape is travel. And here it, for some reason, it just feels like it almost forced me to spend time with myself and get to know me a little bit better, how I can, you know, be chill. And I think that's what being here does to people. Yeah. I don't know. Once you open yourself up to it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And finding that peace. Like you have, it yeah. looks, sounds like. I, I see, so. I watch you, so yeah, I know. I think so. And uh, for me, uh, time. Well, I'm, of course, at a different point in my life than both of you. But um, things changed when we moved here. Talking about, since we're talking about being here in Oceanside and the beauty that's all around us right now. And... Um, in my my situation, it allowed me to really kind of decompress from my previous life, if you will, you know, working and raising a family and everything, mm -hmm. and just kind of evolving into a happy place like you're talking about, Reese, you know? And um, while I'm not hustling and trying to make a buck that way, I was able to enjoy everything more. You know, my wife and I get to spend more time together and enjoy the beach and enjoy back here. And it's not like I don't do anything because I've been pretty productive over the last couple of years <laughs> yeah. uh, with art and getting involved with Logan and this stuff. So it's been cool. And I think the secret is just to be present in the moment. Yeah. Just like you say, it sounds almost cliche these days in a sense, but... Um, it's true. Yeah. Once you can do that in your life, then everything else just kind of happens. But I find that interesting because it's like you, the, you still, you chose that as well as like you choose to spend your time in those ways. Yeah. And that creates peace in your life. And for me, I choose to spend time, you know, I'm at, like you said, I'm in a different spot in my life. Yeah. And right. where I choose to spend my time hustling and bustling, and yet I still find that same peace as you do when you're doing your thing. So we're still coming in the middle, and it's the uh -huh. reason why yeah, I, think I think we all cool. get along really, really well, you, I, you Logan, yeah. and I. So Probably. it's just like because we all have that sense of peace at the end uh -huh. of what we are doing at the end of our days or during our days and things like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, it's... But we're all spending our time doing the things that we are, are happy to do. I know I can speak for myself, but it sounds like you're no, too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. We all do different things as well. Yeah. We're all finding like that said, common that's ground. Cool. Logan works I know, really we, I gnarly mean, though. Yeah. Logan, Logan's work schedule is pretty gnar gnar. I feel like mine is too, but 
I just not like that. <laughs> the, the schedule. So, well, yeah. I I push myself really hard, but I I couldn't imagine having like really really smart bosses like Logan has. Like when I come down into the kitchen, and he's t- on the phone, he's talking in tongues. He's like alien talk at that moment. I'm like, oh, he's talking Harvard talk. Yeah. Mom's gonna go get a protein shake and leave. Love you, babe. Bye. I've walked in on some <laughs> your sweet calls. I feel like I learned a lot though. I'm like, am I getting smarter? Oh, maybe that was just <laughs> No, you know, you know, we were talking about Southern. Thank you very much, babe. You're sweet to say that. Thanks for the vote of confidence on my intelligence. <laughs> if you surround yourself with people smarter than you, you can sound really smart. No, I know we talked and gravitated towards Southern California. It's definitely why I moved here after living so many other places, without a doubt. Same as you, Dave, you know, same. I mean, you grew up here, but you've lived other places. It's one of those things where, you know, the value that we talk about getting back from living here comes at a cost, no doubt. Like, don't get it fooled, people. (laughs) You pay for the value that you get by living here and living close. And you actually have to earn and work and fucking hustle in your life to get it here and live this life. But also the value of time or the value of an experience, if you break it down in a a year or a month or a, a week or a day or a moment or a breath, right? If you break down life over These are just like numerical figures that we give an experience over time, right? It's just to give perspective, I guess, to a block of history. Mm -hmm. But if you break it down, like, and look around you or feel all of your senses in a moment when you're here versus the places that you've been in your life, like how much more value in every second of walking around or driving the coast and feeling the ocean air and at night whenever the traffic dies down you hear waves crashing in the distance every single day yeah you're breathing in the humid ocean freshness where the world the earth cleanses its air through the ocean it is the process and we are close to it yeah the most cleansing place is the ocean yeah i feel that plays a huge role with me Every mile I drive east or walk east, every step I take going east away from the ocean, he starts get turning a little, into a zombie. Yeah. Oh, me too. I, yeah. I don't like going the other side they of the freeway. Foreign policy. Nobody goes east of the five. They have foreign can't policy. Go they figure out what to do with people like Logan when they go too far east. I know. He yeah. starts turning decrepit like... Uh, I you can know. feel my hands getting tighter on the steering wheel when I go under the freeway there. And totally. I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah. Getting too far away oh from God. home. It's so no. funny. I was just talking to someone about that the other day. My sister's in Marietta, and yeah. I'm like, oh. Marietta? <laughs> That's wow. like another state. <laughs> babe, babe, come on. <laughs> Be nice to Marietta. All right, people, don't no, think. I know I people out there, too. Think she's too <laughs> posh to sister. go east of the five. I'm okay. just a lazy bum is what I am. It's I'm just a lazy so nice. bum. She earned it. So nice though. She earned it. Yeah. I'm a lazy bum to drive out that way. I'm like, the yep. ocean yeah. or traffic. <laughs> yeah. I'm choosing the ocean. And see, that's the thing, though. When you can walk down the hill to the office, yeah, uh, walk down the hill without any effort to get your feet in the sand and in, in the ocean yeah. or surf, it's like the value that comes from cutting out the time of loading up the car, getting mm-hmm. in the car, driving, getting a parking spot, getting into the place, you know, unloading, et cetera, et cetera, to cut out all that time and effort to just walk to the garage, grab a wetty, grab mm. your favorite board, walk to the beach and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. The value that comes from the expense and the effort that it requires to achieve that is totally worth it. So when we talk about that as it's related to where we are, We try and break, I've been breaking this down in my head. Like, what about those folks that aren't drawn to the ocean? Like, that's my thing. Mm -hmm. For now, that's my thing. What about, I was chatting the other day. What about the monks? That it matters not where they are in space and time. Their only sole purpose in life is to be within to reflect and to become the best person within matters not where they are. Right. 
they do that through meditation, living off the land, etc. Mm-hmm. Completely different reward and value system from us. But they growed up in that. True. So they were conditioned to believe that that's the value of life. Yeah, as a Westerner, I don't mm. even think a thing of it. I'm I, When you were like, it takes the value of living here. It takes hard work. It takes hustle, all these things. And I'm like, that's pretty much all I know. Like, it's mm -hmm. to hustle. That hustle mentality is, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself if I, I mean, I would probably be stoked on the challenge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be stoked on the challenge to live a lifestyle as a monk for a few <laughs> weeks. Yeah. But I know that at the beginning it would be a really challenging thing for me because I am the kind of person that wakes up and does. Mm -hmm. I'm a doer. And I also have to take the time for myself to chill, which I love. I think the Californian mentality as far as I'm concerned as a, as a true California girl, <laughs> it's like there is like a balance. I mean, it's like a 75, 25% balance. It's like 75% you work your ass off at 25%. We try and do some self care by being in the moment and understanding. And like, my ratio's off. I'm at like 98% work and 2% take care I mean, of myself. I mean, I do this every morning. It's like, the, it's the reason why I do 4.30. It's like from 4.30, for for 4.30 to 7.30. It's like, I'm working out. If he's still in bed, it's like my favorite thing in the whole world to just scratch his back and scratch his head because he's oh like God, I'm dead a tired. I'm a victim. <laughs> <laughs> he's I like dead badly. tired and it's meditative for me be right before I go to work. And right when I get to work, I take 10 minutes to write gratitude journal and I take 10 minutes to meditate before my day even starts with oh, that's good. all the coaching, all the social media, all the content creating, all the tattooing, all the designing, all the things. And then, but that's... Which is this, an ex... I mean, it's amazing. don't don't get it wrong <clears throat> is an enormous amount of work yeah to manage yeah. the business that she runs oh, oh for sure she's just like on record like the most critically organized and knows how to do things quicker more efficient and equally is at, at a level of quality that's required to execute the transaction yeah that's what blows me away about what you do not only do you know like okay, yeah, you learn things quickly, you're a brilliant artist and all these things, but from a systems and design and process pers <laughs> perspective, like, it was like, I know exactly what it takes to get this shit done. I'm going to figure out the fastest way to do it. I'm going to learn something really fast. I'm going to implement that. And I'm going to go teach all my friends how to do it because they're going to succeed, which means we're all going to fucking succeed. And so therefore, okay, yeah, that's right. Tune in tomorrow because I'm going to tell you a new thing on what I learned today because guaranteed I'm going to learn like 50 things today. And then whenever I'm done with that, I'm going to teach at least the top 15 He's of those things totally to all like my friends and family who are good to me. Thank you very much. I love you, everyone. Go on for a run in the morning. Tune in next time. <laughs> <laughs> that's Reese. That's me. Have that is actually Reese. that's wow. We Start have known each other a very long day because time. it serves you value. It val it does for me. That's and you're valuable to me. Fucking good at it. That's why. I know. So, I am pretty good at it. Anyway. But that was funny, babe. The value of time <laughs> as it relates to though, right? As it relates to yeah. what I'm trying to figure out is okay granted 75 25 okay? okay or maybe 98 2 for me during phases of my life i've never been in a phase where i was at a 75 25 i say it that way because i'm like i know every day out of my day there are hours in the day that i spend just for me baby i get it i get it i'm just saying like i've never felt personally like i've yeah. ever been at 75 25 i love it or even 80 20 ever I would say at least 80, 20 for sure. I'll, I'll, so yeah. what I'm trying to think about is why is that? Why am I torturing myself? It was a self value thing, right? Like why torture yourself? Why work that much? So then what did I do? I convinced myself, right? That in the process of working, I'm learning so much so fast, right? It's just the way I operate. Yeah. When I tackle something, that means I'm tackling it with a conscious effort to understand it, right? Mm -hmm. Figure it out, see how I can improve it, and then share that, kind of like what we were just talking about in your MO, mm -hmm. and then share that with my people. Yeah. 
that is a adventure. It's discovery. It's growth. It's learning. This process of working is a growth adventure, right? Oh, it's the. It's, it's how we learn best. rapidly is yeah. by tackling things. It's how learn, you learn about yourself. It's how you learn about other people. It's how you learn about a new skill. And it can only add value to your next step the more you know. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what happens whenever you successfully learn something or learn something, then teach something? That's even better, right? Ugh, yeah. How much of a high is that? It's super it's pretty, high. Yeah, it's a sexual thing. It's so, so this thing, right? <laughs> Imagine being a parent. We don't know what that's like, but Dave, like, I imagine that's a constant growing kids, watching them grow, teaching them every little thing, every step of the way. Yeah. It's, uh, it was, was our sorry, distracted by the birds. The, <laughs> Squirrel. Uh, kids. I started thinking back on it. It's almost like we blinked and they grew up, you know. Is that how it works? But, yeah. But when you're man. in the middle of it, it uh, <laughs> sure do not look like that. <laughs> yeah. It does not look like that. Not when you're in the middle of it. I saw that lady you know, at the restaurant just blade like a thousand times, and she looked like she was suffering, <laughs> yeah. man. It's a there lot a of lady. work. With the three lady. kids around her. Yeah. There, there was a newbie baby yesterday we saw, and this poor lady, she was like, she couldn't wait to hand off that baby so she could suck down that margarita. I was like, yeah. good. Th I wanted to buy her a margarita. <laughs> yeah. I was like, get that margarita, girl. Like, poor thing. That newborn baby, she was waiting for that thing to come out of her so she yeah. could get a margarita down. K kids are a, a big commitment, obviously. And I know for us, we didn't know what we were doing. We just did it the best we could. But now I watch our daughter, Rachel, and she's got three, you know, nine, seven, and uh, one, one, a little over one. And she handles that by herself. So it's pretty amazing. And she has to organize her time, like you say, and like you do, you, both of you with your scheduling because she blocks. has her own business yeah and everything so she's a hustler and has a single mom she, with three kids but bro. she has a and, whole a totally different um like story because hers is completely like the circumstances are so oh it's totally unknown different. with yeah. children yeah and, i mean there is a semblance there is a illusion an illusion that i have in my mind that i have some control over what's going on in my life yeah. but i can only imagine how that illusion really gets shattered when you have children you're well, like <laughs> shattering <laughs> i don't mean it in a she just way, said shattered. but like you're like i really have no control and it, i'm going to accept it, it changes this your life. and they are i'm going to be taught patience in this moment it changes your life because like sure. I, owning a shop honestly i have all artists that are 10 years or younger my youngest is 21 and i'm like my mouth drops on certain things and i'm just yeah. i'm like wow i do feel like a mom and they call me mom which yeah, on some oh. days i'm oh, I, you know, <laughs> i don't even know what to say to that i'm like man but it does feel like i'm a glorified babysitter i'm not like an entrepreneur yeah. i'm an entrepreneur aka babysitter like mm. <laughs> but story of my life but they're, I mean, they're, but I'm really lucky. Like my artists are really amazing. I've worked at shops where I have 40 year old grown ass men acting like high school girls. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. So I'm, I'm really lucky in, in my situation, but still there's, it's, of course we're a family. There's going to be bickering. There's going to be, you know, disagreements and things like that. And I could just imagine like, oh. that's, and these are people that are potty trained. Like I couldn't imagine <laughs> trying to do that with something that's running around being on itself. Oh, like, <laughs> damn, bro, you are a gangster. You guys are yeah, awesome. Yeah, you guys are gangsters. And Rach, she's yeah. Wonder Woman to me in yeah. my mind. Like I don't even get it. <laughs> yeah. And her and your grandkids are. Yeah, yeah. We've Aubrey. had some interesting conversations in here and around the yard. Like adults. Yeah, it's about it's crazy. One, I remember we were talking about. Uh, I think it was Fruit Loops and uh, <laughs> chocolate enough. syrup or something like that. We were into it, whatever it was, but it was about like cereal and stuff. It was so oh, cool. I, I wrote it. No, I remember it because I wrote it down <laughs> that we had that conversation. It was so cute. The socioeconomic impact of uh, Fruit Loops on 
the next generation or something like that. No, actually, I think she was telling me how she actually likes to put chocolate syrup on her Fruit Loops. Oh, wow. What did I get the <laughs> other thought process? <laughs> I was thinking she you was teaching you something about the market and economy. No, She's she, like, the Fruit Loops are represent this. And she knows oh quite God. there yet. Oh, my <laughs> God. There yet. Babe. I mean, she, Where did that even yeah. come from? Oh, I almost went there. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Man, where did that even I come from? Went where, are wrong. You? where are you? I almost went somewhere wrong. My bad. Are we where good? Are just you? cut that out, babe. Because I was like, I'm just because I'm Asian. <laughs> that oh, was it. yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i was taught finances at two <laughs> yeah we're leaving this part in <laughs> exactly see anyway well so coming back to it seriously <laughs> this this thing of teaching that's how we started talking about kids and grandkids and you know the value of life whenever we're really feeling good and we've learned something of value through doing, right? Through working. And then we want to teach the next people in the next round. And then we want to have kids to pass on that legacy or pass on those experiences too. Why do we choose to continue on? Why do we have such a draw to tomorrow or the next step or our next day or morning or the next meeting or the next time we go to the beach, why are we so attached to tomorrow that leaves us constantly thinking about whether it's going to or not going to happen? It's uncertainty, right? Because it's it hasn't happened yet, right? It, yeah, it depends on your situation. Yeah, it's uncertainty, fear of the unknown, that kind of thing. I personally think but, it's just foundational. It's in our innate like instinct to survive. Yeah. That's just what we as humans want to do and that's that's just it. So like when we think about tomorrow whether we're a caveman or we're here in the modern age, we're thinking either the next meeting, but then they were like, do I have what's my next meal? What do I need to catch today so that I can thrive for the next few days? Like it's always yeah, future driven mindset for sure and survival. especially survival. Yeah. 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 Survive but, to live the next experience. Yeah, exactly. What I'm saying is is that to be alive and to experience more is the gift of life in this body, this version, this shot at it. Yeah. Right. right. Well, when I was thinking when you said pain, I was not only thinking of the physical type of it, but people's own men mental emotional health as pain, pain and mental and emotional right. pain that they're like, mm -hmm. I'm future driven to make sure that I'm not feeling like a failure or well, totally. you know, some sort of painful emotion that they might derive from if they're not going to get to that next meeting. If they do call in sick when they're not sick or something right. like that, it's like that moral compass. Oh, I've feeling. totally felt that. Like, am I going to be able to have the conversation I need to have coming totally. up next? And if I can't add the value that my, of the expectation that I've set of myself to, mm -hmm. to bring to the table in the next discussion, like if I feel like I'm about to fall short, yo, yo, that's like heavy. Like, I don't want that. I feel you. I don't want that. So I will die trying just yeah. to be sure that I've nailed it in that next conversation because it's worth that to me. My integrity yeah. is worth that to me. Being and I would much rather die trying mm -hmm. than get there and fall short. Because my perception and my the way I see it mm. is that I've fallen short. Not that there's more things that need to be done. I feel you. So learning how to change the conversation with yourself and the people that you're around is a key element in how we feel when we get to that place. Something I'm learning anyway. Always learning. Tactical stuff anyway. But, Whenever you say the word tactical, I feel like you're gonna come around the corner like James Bond and just be like. Oh. Well, that's like body tactics. Oh. <laughs> I thought that was like equipment tactics. You were gonna say, yeah. but, but what? But what, what I was um, referring to is that that value that we're gaining in the, the, the process of the experience, right, is something that gets us going. We get hyped up on that shit. It's like a drug. 
success is great. When we learn a new thing, we're like, yes, I got it. Mm. Let me tell all my friends, you know, why do we have trophies and ribbons? Because that moment of success is so important for us to feel successful. But we are also, again, foundationally buzzword conditioned to feel because of our grading system as a Westerner, you have, I know if I do this and I get this type of tone of voice from the person that takes care of me, I'm doing a good job or I'm doing a bad job. And then it goes in through teachers where you're like, oh, an A is a good thing. So it's always like, and then when I have a report card, that's my accolade to show off like, hey, and I thrive in that setting, to be honest with you. Like there is a very real feeling of right and wrong. And especially when it comes to success. And I find that really interesting now because success to me means something totally different. It's like, I'll, for instance, the other day I was thinking about, um, you know, my next launch that I'm having for my program and, um, you know, one of my coaches was like, what's your like super hairy, scary goal? Like what amount of money that you would like to make? And just like write that down. What's like the scariest goal that you're like, I want to make this, but it's nerve wracking to have and super scary. And I was like, and then they ask you like, how would you feel if you made that? And for some reason it didn't bring up anything for me. I was like, cool and make me feel good. And then I started asking myself other questions. I was like, how would it feel to teach 232 people, which is the equivalent of making a 232 people in this course? How would that feel? And I was like, that would feel so fucking cool. If I could teach, if 232 people believe that I could help them grow in their business, that would be awesome. And then it started to change my mind on what success actually is, as opposed to the accolade. It's like, what's the feeling that I get that actually it's the same feeling as when I got an A in high school, but it's now it's just like, it's not about money or a grade. It's like the, I guess, I guess it's like teaching and the impact. So that, that feeling, create. that feeling that you get. Yeah. In success. Mm -hmm. When I, what, what I, I'm referring to. Yeah. Is the drug, right? Yes. Whatever that feeling, whatever it is that makes you feel, feel that, that way. Got maybe it. it's money. Mm -hmm. Maybe for you, it's this what you're discovering yeah. is that teaching others or helping others is maybe adding more value yes. in a moment, mm -hmm. right? But that feeling is what I'm talking about, is the drug. Mm -hmm. We talked about it moving to the coast. That adds value. It's a feeling, right? Living here adds more value in every moment being West Coast more often in our life, every single moment, and that's worth something to us, right? These moments of growth through work, we're constantly working to achieve something in value and success. We're constantly going and going and going and doing and learning and living. Why are we so drawn to that, right? Why does it matter so much to get to tomorrow? Why does it matter? Because we're conditioned, because we value tomorrow as an opportunity to have more of these experiences, to connect with the people that we love, to share our souls with our mates. You know, that's the value of life. That's why we're continuing on while we take good care of ourselves when we can, while we eat well, is to continue to live this gig and live this experience and continue to grow and continue to think and continue to be with each other, right? Because tomorrow offers just one more second of that shit, which is fucking awesome. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Whatever that value of time is for each and every individual one of us. Mm. Right? I think that if we can find a way to act like or be like whatever is required to get the most value out of each moment every day, how do you do that? Because time is, I think, completely irrelevant at some point. 
like whether tomorrow happens or not. Yeah. I totally, I for agree. Example. Because well, of whatever you're doing, yeah. you know, like whatever you're doing, there, there is a perspective. Yeah, it's all you know? perspective. Yeah. Because for me, I don't wear a watch. I haven't worn a watch for, I can't even remember how long now. And even though I have to pay attention to the time for certain things, working things that we do and schedules, which are pretty loose in my book, but um, I don't wear a watch. I don't worry. I don't even think about tomorrow. I know it's going to come and there's probably things that I need to take care of, but I'm not thinking about it. I'm just thinking about right now mm. and enjoying this moment. I've worked real hard on just enjoying the moment and really being present. Like if tomorrow doesn't come, I did everything that I felt I needed to do or wanted to do today. Because if tomorrow doesn't come for me here, I won't know, <laughs> yeah. you know, so yeah. I care. So I just want to enjoy every moment that I have. Um, I'm at a different point in life, of course. That's called retirement. No, I don't call it retirement because I still I do, work. I still work. Yeah. And I, and I have ever since I retired and yeah. I didn't retire. I was retired. I got you. I got you. There's a difference in my yeah. story. That's a whole nother no, 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 but I got but it. Oh, it's a hippie grandpa story. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's more. But um, because I'm fortunate enough to be at a different stage of my life, you know, made it this far. A lot of people I know or grew up with or worked with didn't, you know, they're not yeah. here anymore. And I think that and others uh, it plays a big part in your outlook and perception of life because i know things changed for me dramatically a couple of years ago when my mom passed away and have continued to i've been learning more and more about time and the value of time and the moments you have with people and and yourself for that matter doing things you like it's been so profound now that i'm in a place where yeah Tomorrow doesn't come, I'm perfectly happy. Yeah. It's not like I'm looking forward to moving on, but if it happens, it happens. Yeah, I'm with so, you. So while I'm fortunate to be in that position right now, uh, not everybody is, but that's where I'm at. And it's pretty cool, you know? There's good days and bad, but it's cool. Dude, I totally see that. I see you living that life. That's yeah. what I I think is amazing because we're close enough. Like you're definitely living that life, and I get it, and yeah. it's badass. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I think it's amazing. In, at at my stage right now, at least anyway, and I mm -hmm. hope that this continues on. And I know that you still also share this perspective. I think. Keep me honest, but I really look forward to like um, building for the future. Oh, sure. I, and I know that you do too, yeah. right? Even still at this point in your life and so uh -huh. on. But, but I think that that's a huge piece that I leave out of this kind of question is that it's really, really fun to plan and, and build a guideline for future aspirations and mm -hmm. goals and stuff like that. And doing it as a community together is quite possibly one of the most rewarding things is yeah. to have something that carries on that's yeah. bigger than you or beyond you uh -huh. and the value yeah. of that is yeah. like so self it becomes selfless but yet at the same time it's a little selfish because you just really epically enjoy the process <laughs> yeah. it's true and that's Which exactly again, what i was comes saying back about the to success the value yeah. in the moments of building <coughs> something yeah. are yeah. painful i mean look folks like I'm just going to be honest. Maybe it's just me, but if anybody out there has started a small business ever in their entire <laughs> life where they've sold something, whether it's yourself, a product, a service, an idea, if you've ever done that, it was effing painful, I hope, at some point, because yeah. it was for me, and I hope yeah. you go through it too, because I think <laughs> everyone should feel it. Yeah, for sure. Through the ups and the downs. Yeah. But man... <laughs> the dream 
and to put pencil to paper and to add value, to think that you're building something that adds value to your community through working with community is like, psh. it's on another level. That's called family. Yeah. That's yeah. called building a family. Yeah. It changes yeah. We're good everything. at this. We're really good at it. Yeah. I'd like to think so. <laughs> I'm still, you know, learning. I think it's just, that's my favorite part though. I think I've grown <laughs> more. In the last two years of just no longer it being just about me and tattoos. Yeah. Me and my private studio tattooing by myself. It's now I have a family of artists. I have a community of tattooers. I'm just like, that shit's like, it's addicting. You're absolutely right. That yeah. that like growth, growing for myself and then growth for others. And then just, it's just a ping ball situation yeah. like just back and forth like i'm high you're high i'm high you're high like let's keep it going Roller coaster ride, <laughs> yeah. you know it's, it's that like energy amazing. thing like we were talking about we've talked about before well yeah. all of us have yeah. really but about the energy just in the universe and then how we're all connected there's yeah. no question there's yeah. no no there's no question there's two i've Rule seen too many advice. things to make it like a coincidence you know no. it's not statistically no. i was there's just been been chatting with a medical professional the other day that studies things like this and yeah. shared with me how many millions of dollars and time and studies have gone into people studying energy being passed from one person to another person mm. and the receiving the the person receiving the energy from the others was not even conscious of the energy that was being passed to them. I've seen it personally, witnessed it get passed to another person during a fight, hmm. after a fight actually, where one of them got injured really bad and his, his hand was broken. And um, my grandmaster came over and grabbed it and passed her energy, you saw her go weak to a knee, to him, and reset his hand and it, the swelling went down by the end of the day. It was crazy. Wow. It was like that fast. That's crazy. Yeah. And hmm. she studied all over, you know, and, and yeah. these like inner passing of energy. And you would spar with her. She was like five feet tall. And you would spar with her and she you wouldn't even feel her touch you. And you would be on your neck, <laughs> on your back. Yeah. It was incredible. Wow. I've experienced some people that have, you know, like healing energy. Because I've had to go through a lot of stuff like For you sure. have through years. I swear and by Corey and I was Chris. just about to mention Corey. I was like, I would think the yeah. closest that it comes to healing energy whenever Corey yeah. holds me up and she's like, I'm going to hug you right now. And then just literally just like, she's just like, just fall into it. And it's just her words that get me yeah. just going. I'm like, yes. And I'm limp. Like she doesn't yeah. have to tell me. Like my brain just listens to her. It's her voice and the way that she it's passes pretty amazing. information. Yo, it's like shameless almost blog right now. Corey and Chris over yeah. at Origin, Origin Chiropractic. Chiropractic. Yeah. Give them a call. They are we the best. Angels. Oh my gosh. They it's are. I like call they're, them. He, they're complete. They're not from this. I call world. them my yeah. healing Celestial. angels. Yeah. I do. It embarrasses them, but that's what I say when I they go take in there. care of us. Seriously, we're not crazy. I know. No. She barely touched me, and all of a sudden, I my knees were like amazing. It's it's unbelievable. It's crazy. I swear it by is. them. Yeah, same. I, he did I've swear by them. Through, yeah. Beginning, and I've been to a lot of therapy and doctors over the last twenty years, yeah. and I I feel better physically in my body than I have with in, them in 20 years. Oh, for sure. And only seeing what, what in January, I think I started yeah. going. It was, Chris it was funny. He, he was like wax poetic about them. And yeah, also, well, are they giving you to love it. you long time stuff? <laughs> is this happy endings Bad. type of place? And then when I went, I was like, yes, it is. But not in what you think. Yeah. But no, a happy ending for sure. My smile on my face is like ear to ear. <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> I haven't been there in weeks. I know. I'm going next week. Yeah. I've yeah. been there in weeks. It's been something in the air. It's just kept us all so busy. I don't know what it is. Well, they they're they were out of town the last few days too. Well, oh, yeah, that's but I just sense. uh I just haven't yeah. been able to even I was consider anyway. getting over there. I was meditating the other day and it popped up into my brain and I was like and right yeah. then and there, after done, after I was done meditating, I was like, "I'm gonna sign up right now." And so yeah, I, I did. Need to, I need to be in there at least once a week. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, same. I found, so, 
I know. It's you all you got us all hooked, babe. Yeah. So that energy, bringing us back to the yeah. energy thing, is a real deal. So all this positive vibes we talk about and you do in your business, Reese, yeah. and I know Logan does it all the time when we're doing stuff, it it just attracts. Like energy attracts like energy. Yeah. And it's so cool. Yeah. Big snowball effect, really. The more yeah. people Dave, do it, you should just share, with, share with her. You said we were soulmates yesterday. Explain to her your oh, theory the soulmate on soulmates. Thing? He said that me and D Dave said me and him what are soulmates. What are you guys well, doing? I have a little different perspective <laughs> on the term soulmates I was than maybe. Very nasty, but I didn't know how yeah. how gross I could be on this. No. Yes, yeah, so you have that perspective on soulmates. Yeah, so you I, let Dave I had a whole. I have a whole different outlook on it than some people probably do, but um, a soulmate to You're me. You're making me uncomfortable. To me, it could be anybody. I think that everybody sitting right here are soulmates of mine. In other words, friends or souls that are in my, I don't know, you can call it tribe, if you will. So not everybody you meet would be soulmates, but you connect with certain people on a different level. And uh, to me, those are souls in your life, soulmates, whether it's just during this time on earth or maybe in some past life or some other dimension, you know, you're connected somehow. But I, there's just people like that in my life and I know they are. And, and soulmates can be on different levels too, you know? Yeah. You have your, yeah. your friend soulmates and stuff like that and then you have your more personal relationship soulmates, if you will. I guess when I think of a soulmate, it's something... I was brought up differently. You know, you think of like the significant other that's yeah, like your end all be all. Thing. Right. Um, but I think that the way you describe your, like the way you think of soulmate is like mm -hmm. how I would say like kindred spirits. D that's yeah. the same. Yeah. It basically well, the same penguins. thing. In a, what? It, it's we're just not a penguins. different way to look at it. But yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah. Kindred spirits, soulmate. Yeah. Sure. Soulmate. Yeah. To me, it's like. But I also, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. it. It's a really, that's really interesting. I guess I just grew up with a really like. You believe there's one person for every person. I, I think I'd like to think that in my own fairy tale type of way, just because that's how my I was brought up. My my yeah. my real dad, my biological father was um, very a, a romantic, mm -hmm. and he believed. That love, he believed in love at first sight. He like probably man, from Texas. Then. He is from Texas. <laughs> that is a Texas man. Um, yeah, he believed in love at first sight. He said he had, he he felt that feeling yeah. with someone at a Walmart and never did anything about it. Um, really? For reasons was that he was married, <laughs> so mm. he was like, "Oh my god, and like this is wrong," you know, basically. But. It was a really interesting thing. It was a really interesting thing the way you would describe it. And so, hmm. what? He and didn't. There was nothing that happened. It's just that. No, but I'm a, saying, and so that affected you as as far as what a soulmate the meant way you was grew that up and the way he, you perceived the word yeah. soulmate mm -hmm. to be. He he described it as the the one true being that's meant for you, and you might miss it or you might not. Mm -hmm. He doesn't believe that you'll actually end up with the person, but he does believe that there is one person out there for you. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. really interesting, and yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that's definitely how it was taught to you. Yeah, for sure. And your perception of it, the way sure. you've experienced it. Yeah. But I understand the way but that Dave's now, talking about it. Yeah, there's yeah, no right I, or wrong. I mean, I think, really. sure. yeah, yeah, I, think you, I think it's okay for you to think about it how you would like to think about it, oh, too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate <laughs> Not the that permission. I'm sure <laughs> permission, but I'm yeah. just saying, like, hey, yeah, I totally get that. I've, I've heard of that, too. Like, I grew up in the South. Yeah. So that's what it meant to me too. And that's kind up. of the way, yeah. you know, I learned as I was growing exactly. up too. But oh, just yeah. uh, through the years and it evolves and changes. Things, yeah, sure. different changes. It's and like things I that call my happened. best friend my wife. She's not yeah. actually my we're not married right. by law. Yeah. Yeah. That's my yeah. best friend. Figured. Figured <laughs> that's my that. best friend. <laughs> we can use words, it's semantics, Do whatever you know, I want. use yeah. whatever words you yeah. want for Do whatever, what I want. but 
<laughs> no, I, I think the energy thing associated with being a soulmate to someone is, is, is what you're saying is like, we're all, our souls are connected. Our mm -hmm. energy is connected to each other. Sure. And some, yeah, you know, I'm a weirdo. I think about how we're all connected anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just bits of mass moving around yeah. in space and time. That'll mm -hmm. become more Why bits do I feel of like... mass. I feel like a, like a, globule, a blob just floating a around, like a molecule, just like, <laughs> we're, all just a we're just bumper car we don't even mean to. When I meditate, that's what I become, as I just become, I hear you I banging around, around, in, the, around. In, the, in the shower sometimes, I'm like, he's <laughs> meditating. Banging around in the shower. Banging around. That's my, that's my long legs and arms trying to turn around, I don't know what you're talking about. Small shower. <laughs> yeah, it's a narrow shower, and I'm a tall gangly guy. But uh, I'm like, oh, he's meditating in there. <laughs> <laughs> Molecules bumping around. Yeah, that's what I do. I like to, I like to let the water hit me on the head, and like I turn into a a water droplet, and I just become like, yeah, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I, I become nothing. Water. I become nothing, and I, yet I become everything at that moment. Yeah. He starts flailing be... and screaming around in there. I'm just like, don't worry, he's fine. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> I'll imagine that. I'm the molecule being inhaled by like a wild stallion running wild through the open. That's it's different. Crazy. You know, You're being crazy. life, being part of life for that animal to breathe. And it's like, as it's hitting full stride, like I gave it an extra. <laughs> <laughs> what would that be like to be? But so you are cool. that. But you are that. That's Dude, what I'm trying to say. Well, what's funny, <laughs> what's so funny yeah. about that is that like you feel that feeling, <laughs> that like free feeling of oh, what I imagine of being the molecule that is breath that goes inside a stallion running down a beach on a sunset. Like yeah. I feel that vibe. To be part, to be part of, to fuel that. To feel yeah. that you are also the stallion. No, but you For are. Real. Yeah, that's the cool part Stallion. about that because if you can yeah, become everything. that, you can become any part of that. You can We're become so anything. This is definitely hippie talk. Yeah. Well, I like no, it. it's I don't know about <laughs> hippie talk, but <laughs> you know around. I'm a pretty square dude. Uh, are yeah, you? I'm a pretty square Join dude most of the time, as far as most people are concerned. But yeah, you know I like to play <laughs> with the idea and the thought that say. maybe what our conventional thinking of what we think we think we know. Just south Might not be exactly how it is, folks. That's an isosceles triangle way of thought, babe, not square. That's where I'm at with you. Okay, I dig. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Should we uh, <laughs> should we wrap up on that one? Then? <laughs> I think so. I gotta should? pay. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we're done then. All right. Yeah. Cheers. They're a good old crew that's been yo, around yo. a while. Yeah. Come back tomorrow and spend your money with the local business. Come on up by way. We show you a good time. Fill your belly with good food. Play on our beaches, but take your shit when you go home. Pretty please. Take your shit when you go home.